Hey, what's up, it's Jared Hill, and I have a cool device to share with you guys today. It is the Sony Cybershot QX30. This is a smartphone attachable camera. See these little grippers off the back? It allows you to attach it to a smartphone and then turn that smartphone into a better camera. Now, smartphone cameras are getting much better. Um, the iPhone 6, fantastic camera. The Nexus 6, fantastic camera. Um, however, they're still not as good as actual digital cameras because that small little sensor doesn't do too well in low light situations. It doesn't do too well with fast moving action. There are a lot of shortcomings and I'm sure you've had those photos that you've tried to take on your smartphone that just haven't really turned out that well. So for uh, a few hundred dollars, about $350, you can get a device like this, which is a built-in camera. Right now it's powered on, which means the lens is, is out. Um, it does shrink down to uh, the size. I'll, I'll shut it off in a second and show you. Um, the back of, the, of this device has a mount that allows you to snap it into your camera. So I'm gonna grab my iPhone 6 here. This is uh, the regular iPhone 6, not the 6 Plus. Um, this does uh, open up big enough to fit the 6 Plus barely. Um, devices that are even bigger than the 6 Plus are not gonna fit in this. And so eventually Sony's gonna have to come out with a bigger, um, a bigger mount because with my Nexus 6, which is a six inch phone, um, one of the largest phones available uh, right now, I can't fit it in this device. Um, what's cool about this is that you can use this uh, disconnected from your phone. So it's actually connecting through Wi-Fi, which allows me to point this device anywhere I'd like and hold my phone out here. So I've been at uh, uh, concerts and conferences and I've held the device up above my head and then taken a picture with my phone while it's down here instead of having to stand up or you know crank my head all the way up so that I can see what my camera's doing. Um, it's just really neat. So connected to my phone, it's basically turning my phone into a more powerful camera. Now, um, when you take a picture, it actually transfers that picture to your phone so that you can use that picture and automatically, uh, well, not automatically, but right away share it to a social network. Um, that's one of the coolest features and it's what interested me in this camera in the first place, being able to take better photos and share them immediately on social networks. Um, also inside of this camera is a slot for a micro SD card, which means you can fit, um, I believe they have 128 gigabyte micro SD cards now, so you could take pictures and shoot video forever, almost, on one of those cards and store it right to the device as well. So you can store everything to the device and then also send uh, videos and photos to your phone. Um, What's also really cool is you could choose for the camera to shoot its 20 mega, uh, megabyte sized image, which is a large image, and then actually only transfer smaller images like a two megabyte image to your phone. Sharing photos on Instagram don't really require that large of, a, of an image. So transfer the small images to your phone, keep the nice large images on your actual uh, QX30 here, the Cybershot. Um, so on this side of the device, there's actually uh, your ability to zoom right here. So you can zoom in and out on the device right here. And then it has a shutter. Um, so you could take your pictures. So just simply point it at whatever you wanna take a picture and then push it down and it takes a picture. It also works like a, a shutter does on a normal camera. So if you just push it in a little bit, it focuses. Then you push it in the rest of the way, it takes a picture. It's pretty fantastic. Um, so uh, lots of really neat features that I like about this device. It's not amazing in low light. I'll be showing you a couple of examples uh, now of photos that I took earlier with this. Um, in low light situations, it does an okay job. I increased the ISO all the way to 3200, which is the max, and tried to get whatever I could out of this camera in low light. The photo is a little noisy, but it's usable. It's definitely something that you can share online. In a low light situation um, that's similar, if I was trying to get a photo uh, using my iPhone, I would have to use the flash on my iPhone and then the flash would make that photo look crazy, uh, washed out or whatever, and I just, I don't like that. So um, low light is definitely much better in this device. Now on an iPhone, Connecting this device is a little bit more challenging than it is on 
uh, say an Android device that has NFC. NFC allows you to tap to connect with other devices. And even though the new iPhones have NFC in them, Apple hasn't turned that on yet for other devices other than using it for Apple Pay. So eventually, hopefully, Apple devices will have that tap to connect. So what I mean by that is, imagine this is an Android device. I basically power this on, I tap the device like that, and then the device recognizes the connection and they connect to each other. Um, no need to open the app, no need to connect to the Wi-Fi, um, it automatically does that. However, on an iPhone, you have to turn the device on and then change your Wi-Fi connection in your phone. Uh, the camera itself is gonna show up as a Wi-Fi hotspot, basically. You connect to that and then the, the uh, phone and the camera are connected. All you have to do is open the app and you're ready to go. Um, so it's, it's a little bit more challenging on an iPhone, but nonetheless, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I still find this camera extremely useful for the purposes of taking better photos. Um, this little bracket here on the back removes. Um, so if you want a lighter weight or access to the battery door, that's right there. Um, you also have this door here, which is access to your charging port or USB in case you want to file transfer to your computer. Um, and then also your micro SD card that's in here as well. Um, quick access to that. It also has a quarter 20 mount on the bottom, which means you can mount this to tripods or pretty much any device uh, that um, you can mount a camera to that accepts quarter 20, which is the industry standard. Um, so it's, it's a pretty neat device. So let me power it down just to show you how small it gets. Um, it automatically disconnects from my phone. Uh, so right now my phone's saying, hey, where'd that connection go? And eventually it'll give me a message. I can just close the app and then my phone's gonna reconnect to whatever Wi-Fi or data network that I was previously connected to. And it works the same way with Android. So this is about the size of the device. It fits nicely in the palm of my hand. Um, with some little sort of mount, you can actually mount this right to your belt and have it available. Um, these little uh, kind of hooks here just pop right out and then they connect to your phone. Um, this device is fantastic. The only thing I wish that it had was full manual shooting and then maybe a built-in flash. The QX1, which is the like the big brother to this guy, um, has a built-in flash and it also allows you to connect Sony E-mount lenses to it, which is great. I had one of those for a little while, but decided not to hang on to it because of no full manual shooting. Um, however, it was great uh, as long as you have Sony E-mount lenses. So the uh, Cybershot QX30, fantastic. The battery life on it's pretty decent. The photo quality and the video quality on it's pretty decent. Um, now we're gonna take a look at how to actually use this in conjunction with the phone. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so I have, uh, I mounted the camera just so that it would be easier for me to do all of this and have something in the frame of the camera. Um, so this is actually live. Um, this little truck here is, is showing up um, in the, uh, the QX30 and I'm able to see everything on my phone and I'm recording my phone so that you can see what I see. So we're gonna show you the screen here. Um, so what I'm looking at is the interface that I have available to me uh, to control this camera. Now up in the top left-hand corner, I have my shooting modes. We have intelligent audio, superior audio, program, aperture priority, and shutter priority. There is no full manual control in this camera, uh, as well as the other QX line of cameras. Um, there is no full manual control, which is kind of kind of stinks. Like I like the full manual control. However, there is shutter priority and aperture priority, so we have that going for us. I have found, if you're used to using somewhat manual controls on your camera, I found that using shutter priority works the best because if you leave it in aperture priority, then uh, the camera tends to go down into those those low, uh, those slow shutter speed ranges, like one twenty-fifth of a second, and then it becomes near impossible to take a photo that's sharp because um, the camera is at such a slow shutter speed that you and you can't hold it still enough uh, to get a sharp photo. So um, locking it to a shutter speed of one one sixtieth um, allows the camera to to go through. The, uh, the aperture and increase and decrease the aperture as needed. And then of course you also have manual control of your ISO. 
Um, and to change those, it's very simple. I can either tap on any of the items down below. Notice that aperture is grayed out because I'm shooting in shutter priority. So the camera is controlling aperture. Um, so as I darken the scene, um, it's, it's eventually going to adjust and change. It's not really doing it right now. It usually does that right before you uh, compose a shot. It will change the, um, that uh, uh, information. So see it jumped up to 6.3 there for a second, back down to 5.6. Um, right next to the shutter button, which is on the, uh, the right side, you can see the, the camera button that controls the shutter. So I'll take a picture. And so tapping on that actually captures a photo. And you'll see what it's going to do on the screen. It's actually going to bring up a preview of the image that I just took. Um, so right there, we have the preview of the image. Let me just make sure it's yep showing up just fine. Um, right next to that is a little arrow. And if you tap on that arrow, out pops all of your controls. We can adjust ISO by sliding up this slider and then back down as needed. And then you, you just have to kind of be careful with the, um, the slider because it's really small. And if you have a big finger, um, it becomes a little challenging to adjust. We also can adjust our shutter speed, same type of slider. We can also change our exposure compensation here as well, um, and then minimize. Now, um, if we go into full auto, let's go into superior auto, uh, which is superior to the other one. Um, there's intelligent and superior audio. Um, I've, I've tried both and haven't really found that the camera really does a whole lot uh, of difference between the two. Um, but in full auto, you're allowing the camera, of course, to control shutter speed, ISO, aperture, all of that stuff. And so depending on what you're shooting, if you're in lower light situations, the camera is going to want to go down into that lower, uh, slower shutter speed, and then you're going to have a harder time taking pictures. You do actually get a notification on the screen telling you uh, that you need to hold the camera still. Uh, it becomes a challenge. Now, if your camera is mounted to something like this, that's not a problem. But if you have the camera attached to the phone like I did earlier in the video, that becomes a challenge because you're, you gotta hold it still, you gotta hold it steady. What's really nice, as I mentioned before, the quarter 20 in the bottom of this camera allows you to mount it to stuff, which means you can mount it to a tripod, like a selfie stick, or pretty much anything that has a quarter 20 uh, mount, and then this camera can be fixed to something. I could see this camera being really cool with one of those gorilla pods that you can, you can wrap uh, around like a tree branch or around a pipe or something like that, and then pretty much mount this camera anywhere you want. All right, so let's take a look really quick at some of the settings. Um, we have the ability to set a self timer, choose a single shooting or continuous, um, lock our autofocus on or off, touch shutter. I don't like the touch shutter because sometimes if you, if you miss one of your little sliders or your little adjustments, you take a picture. Um, then we have our still image size. You can choose between all of these different image sizes and uh, um, ratios. So if you want to shoot a square image for Instagram, or if you want to shoot, uh, you know, just standard, I, I left it at um, pretty much the largest file size it can make, which is a 20 megapixel 4.3 ratio. Um, you have some quality adjustments, fine or standard. Um, zoom, there is optical zoom only or clear image zoom. And uh, so optical zoom means the just the zoom that's available in the optics of the camera itself. The clear image zoom means that you can actually zoom beyond that, but it's using software once, you, once it gets to a certain point. So it zooms to a certain point, then it uses software. And if you've ever used a point and shoot camera before that does that, you know that the quality of your image falls off drastically after you go into that software mode. So I just like to turn that off. Um, if I really need to try and zoom into something, I can come in here and turn that back on, but I don't wanna accidentally get into that range and then have a photo turn out subpar. Um, size of review image. Now this one's kind of important. If you're shooting the 20 megabyte image and you have the original review image or the original image sent to your phone, that transfer time and that preview time is gonna be huge. I have it set to two megabyte because that's as large of a file as I'm gonna to need to look at it 
and, and get a good idea of that photo um, and see if it turned out uh, before deciding to take another one. I can always save the original file later. However, um, you know, uh, two megabyte cuts down on the load time. Um, beep connected device, turn that off. You could format the, the camera, the card in the camera here. Now for your smartphone settings. Review image, how long do you want that to stay up? Two seconds, I, you can set that. Your save options, on or off. Do you want that image to save to your phone or just save it to the camera? And then of course with the card that's in the camera, you can then transfer your photos later. Um, add location information to that photo, on or off. Rule of thirds and then mirror mode. The mirror mode is basically for when you're taking selfies or something like that, where when you want to hold the camera up and point it at yourself and you want everything to appear correct um, in that. Or if you're pointing it into a mirror and you don't want everything to appear backwards, you could actually kind of flip the image in a sense with that setting, um, which, is, uh, which is a good option to have available. So overall, I, I just I really do like this camera. I, I like the settings. Um, here I can actually go in and view the previous images that I've shot with this. Um, there's a couple images that I shot outside that I'm going to show you uh, full screen and we'll show you some of the settings there as well. Then I can go back into the camera. I can actually zoom in and out from the phone so I don't have to actually touch the camera. It does have a movie mode, but unfortunately, the movie mode is full auto. You have no manual control at all when you're shooting in movie mode. Um, so as you can see here with the movie settings, I can start and stop record, I can zoom in and out, but I have no options as far as being able to change any of the settings, which gets really bad when you are shooting video and your shutter speed is going up and down, it changes the feel of your video. So uh, not having any manual control at all over the shutter at least is kind of a bummer when it comes to shooting video with this thing. However, it's probably not designed to be shooting video. If you're gonna shoot video, use something better. But um, nonetheless, it's kind of a bummer that there's no auto in there as far as, I mean, no manual as far as that goes. So overall, this is a good experience. This Sony's got this pretty well dialed in. Of course, it is connecting Wi-Fi to my phone, so my phone can't do anything else Wi-Fi, which is why I'm plugged into a cable here. Um, I can't AirPlay or do anything like that until I disconnect from this device. It's the same thing with Android. The app works the exact same way in Android. Um, really, the only reason that I'm showing you this on an iPhone is because it's easier to record uh, right now for the purposes of this of this review. So. Alternatively to that, we also have the settings on the camera, uh, the zoom in and out, which does work better than using the phone. And then the shutter uh, on the camera, you can actually push it down a little bit and get focus and then take the picture. Whereas you can't really do that on the phone except for tapping on the position that you wanna focus and then taking the picture. So it's just a little bit of a different experience. And notice that I have that icon in the right corner where it shows that my focus is locked right now. I can unlock focus just simply by tapping on that box to remove it. So taking a picture, very simple, just pushing the button takes a picture. I have that review picture available right away. It's doing it all wirelessly, which is pretty cool. Um, and then this photo is saved to my phone and I can instantly share it to another application such as Instagram or Facebook or whatever, or edit the image in Snapseed or whatever app you like to edit images in. So overall, this is a pretty cool experience. I like using this device. The only downfalls, no full manual controls and, um, and then, you know, you've got this fixed lens on here. There's no built-in flash. But nonetheless, it's still a fantastic device for the price. You're going to get way better quality pictures out of something like this than you are a smartphone camera, even though the smartphone cameras are getting pretty good. Low light definitely outperforms, um, you know, what your, your in... Uh, your in-phone camera can do on its own. So thanks for checking out this kind of review slash tutorial. Um, if you like these, just follow me along with uh, subscribing to my channel here on YouTube or, um, or liking my Facebook page or whatever. You just type in my name, Jared Hill, and you'll find me. Um, I like doing this stuff, talking about this gear, and then talking about it with you guys. So thanks for checking out this video, and we'll see you next time.